how does a man go from this? I got my money, I got my lady, I got a baby on the way. So I'm out. To this. At 20? <laughs> Andrew Jackson, you the man. The way Franklin Saint's story entails is simply sad to watch. A man who once had it all, but once he lost it all, he managed to ruin his relationship with every single person that loved him. Franklin's downfall is one of the best displays in TV show history. And in this video, I'm not only going to be analyzing it, but breaking it down from a psychological perspective. And boy, does it get ugly. I want the life I was so close to having, I could taste it until that motherfucker Teddy ripped it away. That's what I want. Anybody coming after me is in my way. Starting back at zero, that ain't gonna happen. But I promise you, not none of these little is gonna fuck with mine. Not a single one is gonna fuck with my money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to go to the place you're about to go. It's hell down there, and you don't even know if you'll be able to pull yourself back up. I will get back my fucking money. Everybody breaks. You ended my fucking life. After everything I fucking did for you, you not gonna fucking talk to me. You did this to me. You ended my fucking life. Before we point the finger at Franklin, what would you do in his situation? After enduring the hardships of the drug game, killing, lying, and escaping death on multiple occasions, it all became worth it, as Franklin retired with $73 million to his name. He was gonna marry his girlfriend Veronique and use the money to provide a comfortable upbringing for their children and the following generations. But after making that decision to retire, Franklin's plug, CIA officer Teddy McDonald, robbed all $73 million, wiping his account and leaving Franklin back where he started, broke. Starting back at zero. That ain't gonna happen. You can only imagine the pain and the anger that would take over once losing such a substantial amount. Loss aversion is a cognitive bias that describes why for individuals, the pain of losing is psychologically twice as powerful as the pleasure of gaining. The loss felt from money or any other valuable object can feel worse than gaining that same thing. If I were to give you a thousand dollars right now for no reason, you'd be pretty happy. But if I took a thousand dollars from your account for no reason, it would hurt more and you'd feel pain to a larger extent than to the happiness of receiving the money. It's not even just that for Franklin, but he's aware of the person he had to become to make this money. How much of a monster he had to become for the sake of financial freedom. I've killed people, destroyed lives, whatever I had to, not just to survive, but to win. I saw the simple truth. If by any measure, Monster. And now, that was all going to be for nothing. And beyond the financial freedom, money gave Franklin power and respect. And without the money, he felt as though he'd fallen from the highest pedestal. This created a character with no sense of morality. In his eyes, nothing had as much importance as money. And he was going to do whatever he could to make it back. Told you the gloves had to come off. I didn't realize that meant robbing your own family, though. You had to stop the bleeding. Buy us some time till I could find Teddy. Franklin tried to ask his Aunt Louie for help, but she rejected. So Franklin robbed his own uncle and aunt of $3.4 million of cash and cocaine, sparking a war between family members. I heard you when you said you didn't want to go to war with your family. But you need to know exactly who we did. Although $3.4 million is much less than Franklin's $73 million, Jerome still feels the pain of being robbed and builds anger and resentment towards his nephew. And out of this emotion, he murders one of Franklin's female bodyguards, Black Diamond. Tell Franklin that I did this. But instead of retaliating, Franklin opens his eyes. He realized what was about to entail. He was about to go to war with the most important male figure in his life. Jerome and Franklin had a unique bond. Franklin's father, Alton, became an alcoholic and was mostly absent, leaving Franklin's mother, Sissy, to look after a young Franklin. But Jerome, her younger brother, stepped in and raised Franklin like his own. Instantly, I had love, I had purpose. I was gonna be the man to raise you. 
for the longest time I thought that by lifting you up, watching the young man that you were going to become, that that maybe be the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. Jerome was the closest thing Franklin had to a father, but with limited opportunity, financial struggles were still a problem. That was until Franklin found his way out, selling crack cocaine to people in the neighborhood. Jerome originally wanted no part of it, but this is where the importance of Louis comes in. Louis was Jerome's girlfriend who he'd eventually go on to marry, and she was pretty useless for the most part. But Jerome loved her deeply and did what he needed to keep her happy. But what this created was a man who never followed his heart, something we see have a negative effect time and time again. When Louis heard the proposition, she instantly became intrigued and pleaded for Jerome's involvement. Franklin gonna do this with or without us. Be better for him if we in on it. We got a good life here, don't we? But it's still late enough, right? You sound like a little girl right now. Maybe I do. For seven figures a month, baby, this world will be whatever the f we want it. This then enabled Louis to take the reins years into the drug game, with Jerome playing more of a secondary role. So when she had a problem with Franklin and decided to break away from the business, he followed. And that's what makes their current war so sad. The terror in their relationship is collateral of Louis' actions, creating a false hatred, blinding them of the love they once had. They attempt to talk it out, but things take a left turn. I try to give you legacy. Something more than a subwoofer and a weight bench. And if you hadn't let yourself get played by that trick you married, you might have had You think you're talking to? You have a man. You ain't gonna do shit. I ain't gonna do shit. Do it. Kill me. In this shit right now. God! Do it. This battle is tough for Franklin psychologically because deep down he still has love for Jerome, but he feels as though he can't let love get in the way of his money. This was a major sign that greed had overwhelmed Franklin. He picked money over family, a narrative that would continue. They continued to go back and forth at each other for a while until an abrupt turn of events occur and Louis is kidnapped by Kane, an accomplice of Franklin, and begs Franklin to save her. You want Teddy? I'll help you. Sorry, Louie. I already got an in. Franklin then surprisingly makes the decision to call Jerome and let him know what was happening, and they team up to break her free. But during the process, Jerome dies whilst killing Kane, a bullet to the chest, dying while trying to save his woman. Franklin crying at Jerome's death speaks volumes. He never wanted Jerome to die. Regardless of the words said, regardless of the guns they pulled on each other, the love was underlying throughout and it really hit hard for Franklin. At first he tries to cope using defense mechanisms. He was my blood, right? And I loved him. But he never should have broke away from us. Defense mechanisms essentially help you ease anxiety in your mind when there's conflict within. But the one Franklin seems to be using here is denial. He's trying to appear as though he's lost love for Jerome for breaking away, but his tears would say otherwise. Now he's trying to put up this uncaring front. Not too long after, he suffers from a bad nightmare. Franklin! Wake up! 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 Suppressing emotions doesn't eradicate the feeling, it still remains within your subconscious. But Franklin continues to do so in the pursuit of his money. Franklin became heartless after this and performed actions that make him nothing less than evil. My accounts are the same as when you took him. Call William, tell him to transfer it all back, do it now, and your pops gets to walk out of here like nothing happened. You don't want to do this. This is the last time I'm going to say this to you, Daddy. Send me my mother money. Do it right now. That's not how it works. There's a process, even if I could. Wrong answer. It was the most incompetent soldier ever. 
What the fuck? What was that? Hey, Frank, the fuck did you just do? This is a depth we've never seen Franklin ever go to. He's never killed someone innocent. His previous victims were accidents or enemies. Kevin was his best friend who he accidentally killed, shooting him in the leg to stop Kevin murdering someone else. And even though technically Kevin was innocent, Franklin deeply regretted it and felt bad instantly. Andre Wright was doing everything in his power to get Franklin into a jail cell and therefore Franklin saw him as a threat and killed him. A man boy was a direct enemy who was out to kill Franklin, so Franklin tricked and killed him. Rob was Franklin's friend that was spilling secrets about Franklin working with the CIA and was becoming addicted to cocaine and therefore Franklin saw Rob as a liability and took him out. By no means at all am I saying these murders are justified, but they show Franklin as a character who does whatever he needs to to win. But he just killed an old man and showed no remorse. He didn't do that to win, he did that in an attempt to make Teddy feel pain. Franklin by all means is desensitised to killing at this point. Desensitization essentially means that stimuli that would usually shock you no longer does due to the repeated exposure of said stimuli. The first time Franklin ever had to kill was in season 1, when a gangbanger named Carvel stole his money. Along with his best friend Leon, Franklin kidnapped Carvel, took him to a desert and planned to kill him. But Franklin couldn't pull the trigger and Leon had to do it for him. Fast forward and now he can slit an innocent old man's throat without remorse and all the killings he's either done or seen have desensitised him and allowed him to do so, along with the extreme desire to hurt Teddy after feeling betrayed. Things almost go terribly wrong though, after Franklin's plan fails and he gets kidnapped by Teddy, who gets close to ending his life, but then he gets saved by Gustavo, another accomplice. He then reverses the roles and holds Teddy hostage. He tortures him. He protests that he gives him the money. The account numbers, last time I'm gonna ask you. But during this time, their dialogue reveals more to their dynamic than had been displayed in the previous seasons. You never respected me, never saw me as a partner, but you know that's how I saw you. I actually thought you was my friend. And as f***ed up as that sounds, <laughs> let me shed scenes with telling truths. I actually thought that we might know each other for the rest of our lives. During their time selling cocaine together, Franklin had been manipulated to believe Teddy was actually on his side in some way, making him an easy victim to steal from when it was all over. Franklin couldn't see that until now, which is why it's so hard for him to comprehend. Oh, no, that's not it. You were manipulating me from the start. Taking me to that Iranian bank, acting like you wanted to help me when really all you wanted to do was know where I was keeping my money. Betrayal has a strong effect on one's psychology. When someone has a friend go behind their back or a partner cheat on them, their instant thought is wanting to hurt them just as much or even harder, which we all know as revenge. Franklin has become an extremely vindictive character, essentially someone who tends to hold grudges and get back at you when they feel they've been wronged in some way. But we've seen Franklin behave in ways and carry out actions that the average person wouldn't. For some people, they could behave like this because they're born narcissists or psychopaths genetically. but. Even Franklin himself believes that the events in his life have shaped him. You are an animal. I am what you've made me. Franklin feels betrayal, manipulation and theft have all created this evil character that he's become. A sociopath. But at the root of it all, Franklin has only become like this due to his pride and greed. Two of the seven deadly sins. Franklin feels without money, he isn't respected. Before selling cocaine, he felt lost. He felt he was an irrelevant member of society. He had friends, he had family, but no meaning or legacy and no power. The more money he made, the more people respected him, the more people feared him, and the more control he had to live the life he wanted. I want the life I was so close to having I could taste it until that mother Teddy ripped it away. That's what I want. He was about to go and live in his mansion, marry Veronique, have kids and give them a great upbringing, all because he worked hard for his future and this made Franklin feel in control. And I'm not saying Franklin shouldn't be enraged, he'd lost 73 million dollars, but he didn't know when to stop, and he went to depths that no man should go to just for money. He was in a dark place psychologically, to a point of no return. What if we split it? 37 million dollars. Each walk away with a small fortune, and then we go our separate ways. Franklin showed he was willing to compromise, agreeing that half the money is enough for him. He plans to hand off Teddy to the CIA after the money is transferred. The password. But Sissy makes a sacrifice. Oh. 
Franklin's lost. One of the greatest tragedies of my life. Sissy Saint, Franklin's mother, provides another interesting dynamic to Franklin's character. From the start of the show, Franklin had been shown to have an extreme love for her, but she eventually grew to despise him. How did he go from this? Fine. Love you, love you, love you. Best in the world. Come back for dinner, okay? I'll be there. To this. What kind of f***ing mother are you? You're not gonna f***ing talk to me. Huh? This is all your f***ing fault. You ended my f***ing life. After everything I f***ing did for you, you're not gonna f***ing talk to me. You did this to me. You ended my f***ing life. And Teddy should have blown your f***ing head off. You f***ing you. Sissy was always one foot in, one foot out with Franklin's antics and he became tired of it. When he first started making big money from the streets, she refused to take any of it. I can't accept it. What you mean? What you mean you can't accept it? And I bought you a house, mom. In cash. Illegal cash. Using a fake name. Don't you see what's wrong with that? But perhaps tired of struggling, she eventually worked with Franklin to help clean his dirty money through a real estate business, which she had expertise in. Their relationship then fluctuated. The more Franklin went on, the more his decisions were about money in contrast to about family. When Franklin's money was stolen, she was originally on his side, willing to help take down Teddy. Still want to get a hold of Teddy and kill him? I can help you do that. But when she saw how bad Franklin was becoming, she didn't want him to go any further. Franklin, I think we need to let this go. I see what this is doing to us, what it's already done. Look at me. Revenge is the only thing on my mind, and look at me. This, this obsession with this money. Look at where we are, Franklin. What we're becoming. No matter how much people online disagree with Sissy's actions, she is right. Maybe her execution and timing of things are wrong, but her message is right. Franklin is losing all of his good human traits trying to pursue this money. He's lost his peace his happiness, his gratitude and his sanity. She tries to tell him that he doesn't need to go any further because the money isn't worth all of that. Franklin isn't going to die without the money. Yes, his life isn't going to go the way he wanted it to, but his sanity is worth more than money. He still had the real estate income. His best friend still had $3 million in cash. And most of all, everyone still close to Franklin didn't want him for his money. He could have accepted the fact he got played, which don't get me wrong would have been incredibly hard to face, but he was in a game where most people die or end up in prison. He still had his life, he still had general freedom, he still had love, but that wasn't enough for him in his mind. Sissy knew this and tried to stop his greed going any further, which is why she did what she thought she had to do. However, it's also likely she killed Teddy out of rage because Teddy admitted to killing her husband. Either way, her original mindset was correct. And you and I? I'll never see each other again. Can you live with that? Yes. When Franklin told her he could live with never seeing her again, she'd realized he valued money over family, just like with Jerome, and he'd lost her at that point. And she wasn't the only important woman he lost. When Franklin met Veronique, he slowly changed. She fell pregnant with his child, which made him realize the need to get out of the drug game. His unborn baby became the main motivator to stop being involved, making Veronique important to Franklin. Their love seemed to be genuine, and when Teddy stole his money, she sided with him. For me, he's a man who hasn't lied or raised a hand. He's doing everything in his power to deliver the life I want, no matter how he has to do it. Veronique does value Franklin's money because she sees it as a means of safety protection and peace. So she begged him to leave the drug game and use the money to raise their baby. For the most part, she tried to empathize with Franklin while still trying to keep him from going too far. Swallow your pride. Listen to your mother and make peace with your family, okay? Veronique, just like Franklin, justifies his actions with the fact that it's for their baby. She might not be as greedy, but still sees the importance of the money. However, Franklin and Veronique became unsteady when Franklin started drinking. It started with a single shot after his mother killed Teddy and ruined their chances of getting the money. But after he had felt the temporary relief it gave him, he used it to cope. Mm. 
The drink mixed with Franklin's realization that he has no money and the anger towards his mother put him in a volatile mind state. Veronique admittedly did wrong as she went behind his back to see what prices investors would be willing to pay for some of their real estate shares. She should have spoken to Franklin beforehand and she was sorry about that. Franklin, however, took things too far. No, 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 baby, that's not all I said to you. Don't ever go behind my f***ing back again, you hear me? This is the moment he lost her. A woman can drop her love for a man instantly if he puts her hands on her. Bear in mind she watched Franklin kill Teddy's father, knowing he's losing his mind and becoming a threat to her. But that was enough for her to take the remaining 800k left in his investment account and flee the country. I'm sorry, Phil. Um, how substantial? I'll need to verify the exact amount. The majority of the available funds, somewhere in the neighborhood of $800,000. Franklin lost both Veronique, his unborn child, and the last amount of money he had left. It's ironic because his child and Veronique were the main reasons he wanted the money, but he proved he desired the power more. When it all came down for Franklin, he believed there was only one more person he could turn to. Listen, Lee. I need money, man. And a lot more than another 500k. And I'm sorry, I gotta ask. Leon had been Franklin's closest friend from young and might just be the most important character in this story. We see Leon looking at Franklin with disappointment during this scene. He's known Franklin forever and has seen him transition from an innocent go-getter to an evil, greedy murderer. And during Franklin's downfall, Leon tries to keep Franklin from going down this path, just as Sissy did. She's right. I've been around you my whole life, so I know how bad you want this. And I always believe in you. But trust me when I tell you, you don't want to go to the place you're about to go. It's hell down there. And you don't even know if you'll be able to pull yourself back up. The real reason Leon is so important is because despite being best friends, the two of them are opposing characters. While Franklin started off innocent and became villainous, Leon started out delinquent and experienced redemption. In the early seasons, Leon was hot-headed, violent, and didn't have purpose. But as time went on, he hated the violence that went on. He hated that black people were bringing each other down for greed. So he went on a long trip to Ghana to open his mind. He married his sweetheart from young, Wanda, and he came back reformed. Advocating for further education, trying to lessen the drug dealing in his area, and trying to get Franklin to realize there's more to life than money. She didn't want you to have that money, and I ain't gonna disrespect what she did by giving you something she didn't want you to have. Are you for real right now, after everything I've done for you, you gonna sit there with a life raft and watch me drown? Nigga! <laughs> I'm the reason y'all niggas got this f***ing money in the first place. It's blood money. If I can give it all back, I would. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Great. Give it all back to me. I need that f***ing money, Lane. And you're going to give it to me. Or I'm going to take it. Franklin began to gaslight and tried to manipulate Leon, who sees right through him with further disappointment. Franklin telling Leon the money is basically his it's like your employer asking you for your salary back because they're the ones that paid you for your work. Leon isn't even offended by Franklin's demands. He just wishes Franklin can somehow reform to find redemption like he did. Maybe if Franklin changed, Leon would have helped him move into legit business side by side as partners. But he couldn't work with someone like that and Franklin became his own worst enemy. Three months later, and Franklin was taking out loans just to pay the rent whilst living in his mother's old house. Being at the top and falling to the bottom put Franklin into a great depression. Franklin making his fortune felt amazing. Franklin losing all of his money put him into a deep despair. He continued to drink, with no loving person close to him. Veronique had disappeared, Leon went back to Africa, and his mother was serving life in prison. Franklin lost everything. In a previous season, Franklin had been robbed of $5 million by his bodyguard Peaches, who stole it from his warehouse and fled. At the time, Franklin still had an enormous amount of millions and didn't bother wasting too much energy on it. But he'd kept his investigator top-notch on Peaches to notify him if he's ever sighted, and he was. Franklin, still trying to regain his wealthy status, assumed Peaches would still have a large amount left. So he went to the location, killed Peaches, but found most of the money was gone. <laughs> The 
fact that $12,000 wasn't even enough for Franklin to take proves it isn't about surviving, getting by, because most of us would have gladly taken $12,000. To him, it's about getting back that power, being a millionaire, having that status. He even kills two more innocent people in the process of trying to retrieve that money. Franklin was truly done. By the end of the 80s, Leon came to visit Franklin. Franklin had become an unrecognizable alcoholic. He had turned into the version of his father that he'd hated. He lost the house and he had nothing left. Even a $20 note from Leon was enough to give him a moment of excitement, which he used to buy more alcohol. My previous statement that Leon was the most important character rings true once more, as Leon had opened up a legal clinic with his money, going down the legit route and finding fulfillment in the fact he is helping people who live in struggle. Leon didn't experience the pain Franklin did, granted, but it's sad to see how the two of them went completely different ways despite starting from similar positions and Franklin definitely could have taken a path like Leon if he wasn't so greedy. The bottom line is, the one thing a man can't bear to lose is his freedom and they will do anything it takes to get it back. The final scene between Franklin and Leon is one of the saddest endings but also a fitting ending to a downfall like Franklin's. You're my best friend. Best friend I have fucking had. And I'm fucking proud of you. Same.